Hello and good evening. What I have today is a oscillating multi-tool. The box says Germany, but it's as Chinese as they come. I ordered this off AliExpress. It costs about 60 bucks. And the whole gimmick of this is that it is supposed to be totally compatible with Makita batteries. I have a bunch of Makita batteries and I have a slight need for an oscillating tool, so I thought I'd give it a shot. The model number is either DTM41, DTM51. Uh, the instructions are more or less broken English um, and German. No Chinese, which is interesting from AliExpress. It came with a variety of cutting tools and that bumped up the price uh, by a little bit. I put it back in the box to show you what's in the box. Um, I've already pulled this out and attempted to test it. We come with the oscillating tool. The brand name on it is One Van. And that sticker is sort of in the right place. Uh, the tool itself doesn't claim to be made in Germany or anywhere in particular. Uh, came with a really cheap plastic handle, screws in. It's got a tricky to operate little mechanism there. And that lets you slide on a blade. Pretty nifty speed control. But I've been having an issue with it and that I have the Makita battery here, BL1850B. Tested the battery, the battery's good. Voltage on the rails and plug it in, turn it on, and absolutely nothing happens. So I'm gonna tear it apart. Hopefully I can fix it and we'll be able to figure out from there. We've got eight screw holes here on the side. Uh, one, two, three, four on the top. Uh, they all use kind of a, looks like a hex. Gonna use a Torx bit though. Gonna go with a Torx T10. Okay, I got all the screws out. One small issue. I have 11 screws and there's 12 screw holes. And I don't recall missing any of the screw holes, but I also cannot find a missing screw. So they may have shorted me, I may have lost one. I'm not sure, something to keep in mind. All right, so this top piece comes off here. Have this kind of, got a bearing. Got two bearings up here. Uh, they're probably slightly off center to kind of get that linear motion out of here. You can see it saddles into a lever into this uh, chuck sort of piece. It's kind of interesting is all the, all the grease is on one side of this bearing. It hasn't been spun around at all. So I don't think they tested this at the factory and it doesn't work. So that might be related the lever there, move back and forth. Uh, it all seems to be pretty much one, one cast piece. Got a little screw clip in there. So this little lock slid in the back and that's some kind of a soft plastic nylon, maybe. Okay, now let's pull this open. There we go. Okay, already I can see what's wrong with it. That's so easy, it's depressing. Yeah, the power lead is not soldered on there. And there's a bunch of grease or flux on that post. And a tiny, tiny little dot of solder. And the tip of this has been 
tinned. Controller board here. And there's part number. Seems to be pretty much a mostly dumb speed controller. It's a tiny little microcontroller here. Can't see a part number on it. We have a cheap panel mount switch that this lever just sort of pushes on and off. And this motor and fan is all one unit. SW motor RS560, 21V, probably 21 volts, made May of 21. So this motor has not been sitting around. Looks like the fans built in, all one unit. I know this is a brushed DC motor. Kind of inconsistent soldering on this big old blob here. Not a lot on the positive side again. This feels like pretty nice wire though. It says 18 gauge. Just the, the, the coating on this feels like silicone or something. It's not that normal plastic I'm used to feeling. There's the back of the controller board. Just two, two little pegs there that slot into the battery. Just like that. And not a lot to it. Doesn't look like I can get this motor apart. Can't really get that chuck apart either, really. Yeah, I don't think that's coming apart. Yeah, I do have to say I'm pretty impressed by the, uh, the molding of this case here. Everything's pretty clean. Uh, more or less. A lot of anchor points for this, uh, this kind of rubber, this rubber over mold. So that's held on pretty good. I'm not seeing any kind of, uh, marking on the case at all. It does feel nice and stiff though. Like, good feel to that. Yeah, no markings. Feels like what I would expect a tool to feel like, though. Uh, it's probably glass-filled nylon. Here, maybe you can uh, hear the... Yeah. Feels a little bit crispy, so I... Th yeah. I think it's glass-filled. So not a lot to look at there. So let's fix this terrible soldering job and see if we can get to work. Let me turn on the soldering iron. Okay, I got the soldering iron. I got myself a little piece of uh, heat shrink just to uh, go over that. I'm not gonna bother fixing anything else. It's These parts just seem really cheap. It feels really light duty. There's no kind of uh, there's no kind of conformal coating or potting or anything on this cheap board. Looks like an off-the-shelf board, off-the-shelf motor, off-the-shelf switch that doesn't even doesn't even feel like it belongs in this tool. For 60 bucks, that's that's kind of pushing it. It's like, yeah, it's cordless, but uh, I don't. This isn't really worth the cost over the cheapest possible oscillating tool you can buy that just plugs into the wall. Get it, uh, you know, off Amazon or Arbor Freight or wherever. So... I guess that post is a much bigger heat sink than I thought it was. Okay, let's try some flux. This isn't working out. Don't judge, I didn't do much better, but at least it's on. 
that he drank. Now oh, whatever, good enough. Bad soldering with a worse fix aside. Uh, let's put this back together and see if it works. Uh, we could try it just like this, but I don't wanna throw grease everywhere. So yeah, let's put this back together. Get the motor in. It's got a little slot for the board. A little slot for the switch. Got a slot for the battery connector. All just slides into place. that. Nothing really holding this stuff in. I feel like I'm screwing up the switch somehow, but... There we go. Just tuck that out of the way. Switch back in, get that lined up. Okay, the wire's just getting in the way. Here, let's flip this over. It looks like there's a little wire management spot, kind of, right there. No, well, not really, but I think that's what's hitting. Well, it looks like it slots in nicely. I'm just not sure what's, what's getting in the way. Not a lot to get in the way. Must be the switch, because it worked without it. All right, there we go. Let's get one to hold the case and get that top back on. Okay, it's not keyed at all, but slots right in there. Okay, I got the top on. Hopefully we can keep the case together long enough to... There we go. Long enough to just get this thing together. You know, I don't have any high hopes that this thing's gonna last very long. Uh, it feels good, but I mean, internally, very, very disheartened um, by the poor soldering job, lack of strain relief. Uh, those wires are supposed to go somewhere specific. I didn't see it. And there's absolutely nothing to protect that circuit board and against any kind of dust or water or anything really getting into this. So if you work too hard, something's gonna get in there. It's a pretty pretty open case. You got these fan holes all along here. Uh, so if you really get into it, uh, something's gonna go in there. Something's gonna mess up that board, short it out, and. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to find a replacement very easily, even though that looks like a pretty standard board. You know, try, try your local AliExpress, but uh, probably not. It's, they probably don't sell them. They probably just have them on the shelf at the factory. Uh, pick apart for just cheap tool makers to come in and, you know, assemble by design. Okay, moment of truth. Does it work? It does. Great. Okay, one more thing. I noticed that we have a one here by the switch. 
See the one? And inside when it turns on, got the zero. I got the switch in there upside down. Uh, not a big deal, but I'm gonna pull it apart and fix it. That was the one van, Makita compatible, Makita knockoff, Chinese compatible. It says it's from Germany. I very seriously doubt that. Battery operated oscillating tool. Thanks for watching.